From the late 18th century up into the 1940s, Britain's cotton industry had become such a major economic force that it fostered the saying, Britain's bread hangs by Lancashire's thread. Britain had been the biggest cotton cloth producer in the world since the Victorian era. In 1860, there were more than 2,500 cotton mills producing half the world's cotton. And while thousands of workers laboured away in the mills of the north, those in the Lake District had their work cut out, supplying the bobbins or simple wooden reels needed to retain the yarn. Millions of them in all different shapes and sizes were essential for the cotton spinning and weaving machines. More than 70 mills sprung up throughout the Lake District during the 19th century. When Scott Park Bobbin Mill opened in 1835, near the village of Finthswaite, it was the perfect setting. This wood here was grown especially for cutting or coppicing, as it was known. Different species of tree were cultivated in cycles such as birch, ash and sycamore, harvesting these long great poles before they were then turned into the bobbins and the water that you can see in here now, well that was the engine room, that was the power that drove the water wheel and then later the water turbine. So you can see the mill used its natural local resources right on its doorstep, water and wood. This mill is now the only surviving example of a bobbin mill in the Lake District. Today it is a working museum run by Mick Callaghan of English Heritage. Oh, wow, I love this place. It's so atmospheric, it really is. Is this exactly what the mill would have looked like back in the 19th century when things were working at full tilt? Well, this is exactly what it would have been like in 1835 yeah. when it was built. It changed slightly in 1880. It was water power, yeah. then it was steam power, and then we've finally we've got electricity put in. There was 20 men working here and six lads at the height of the industry. Yeah. And when they were working, they could produce over 250,000 bobbins a week. A week? A week. It was a massive oh. industry. Did it, you get paid for how many bobbins you made? Was it, it, was, was it like that? Sort it was piecework. Yeah. They paid by the gross. Yeah. So for every basket or gross, they were paid an amount. So it's heads down, see you at the end. Just really? working every day, as many as hours as they could. Will you take me through the process? Yes, Because I know this is, this is still working today. Certainly. And we I'm can put, itching to have a go. We can put the machines on, you can have a go. So I'll switch the line shafting on now then, have I? I'm ready. Everything starts to spin and turn. <laughs> this really is like a window back in time, you know? I'm loving this, I really am. I thought you'd enjoy this. Yeah, it's just great, it really is. Right, I want to get started. Come Can we? Then. Come round this way. There's some glasses. I'll show you in the first piece. OK. So you put the block in, get it spinning, bring the cutter in, and the cutter from the other side. As quickly well, that's as, quick, isn't it? As quickly as that, you've roughed the bobbin out. And that's ash, isn't it? That's Ash there. Do you want to have a go? Yeah, I want 20 goes, please. Right, you go around in place of me. So put it onto this end, no this end. Put it onto this end. I'll that's muck it. it up. Bang it on, that's it. Hold that tight, that's it. Hand on there, pull it towards you. There we go. My first bobbin turn, ready? Yes, yeah, keep it tight and then go the other way. Very good. And then just a little loosen off of it, and then it just comes off. There you go. So there's your roughed out bobbin. <laughs> I'll just think. Just... It's not very good, is it? It's rubbish. <laughs> it is rubbish. Swap it for a better one. <laughs> oh, well, go <laughs> have another go with that one, so that's a smaller piece. Right. Hold that tight. Pull that. Just bring it up to it. Pull it in. Right in. Right in. That's it. Perfect. There you go. We'll make a bobbin out of that one. OK. OK, <laughs> let's go. All right, we'll go around this way. The rough bobbin would have been passed over to the bobbin master maker for finishing off. We're now on the finishing machine. OK. We just put the bobbin on, get it spinning, so you wind that in, that shape to one side, and then those two cutters there... Just Trim it off. Just round off the car. Ah! It's very clever. 
and there you have a finished bobbin. That's brilliant. Can you, I have a go? You want to have a go? You yeah. step in there. I feel like a kid. This is so magical. So right. Push that up. That's it. And then, then just wind that in. That's it. Just round off the corners. Oh, I like that. There we go. Your bobbin just wants your hand. There you are. Mind you, that's only one. How many would one chap make in a day? At least know, two, two and a half, three thousand, thousand, maybe more. Depending on the size and setup. Oh, day in and day yeah. out. So that's it, really. That is just one type of bobbin. It is, and they've made over 260 different styles and shapes of bobbins in this mill. Gosh. Well, there's my bobbin, and I'm proud of that, but can you imagine what it would have been like working in here back in its heyday, churning out 250,000 of these every week? That's tough work. So it's not surprising that many suffered from consumption and dust-related disease. Much of the workforce lived in the nearby village of Finthwaite, making this a close-knit community centering on the mill. How do you do? Hi. Pleased what to meet you. What a tranquil setting. Isn't it tremendous? Yeah. We are very lucky. Today, Sophia Martin lives in the house that was previously owned by the Bobbin Master. Over the years, she has been finding out about the people who lived and worked around the mill. This house was divided into two. When we bought it, it was knocked back into one. Okay. But in the, um, in the past, it's been two separate cottages. This man, um, John Gibson, he lived on the right-hand side as we're looking at it. And there and he is he in the was, bobbin room. Absolutely, there he is, standing at his bench, yeah. in amongst all that machinery yeah. and these huge piles of the wood shavings yes. and things that you've yeah. seen. On the other side, um, on the left-hand side as we're looking at it, there was a family called Kerwin, and um, both father and one of the daughters worked in the mill. His daughter, who's in the census when she's only 13, she's already working oh, as a bobbin borer. Mm. Um, this is not her this is a it, it's a lad yeah but um that's the machine that she would have worked um, so there's been a whole history of people that worked in the bobbin factory here living yes. in this house yes yes yeah we were lucky enough to see the factory actually working before it closed. We went down there uh, just a few months before it shut and they, they demonstrated the machinery to us and we, we had a look. And my mother said to me, you know, look at this and remember it because you won't see anything quite like this again. And so we did all, <laughs> we had a good look at it. Fascinating. It was the age of plastic that finally killed off the wooden bobbin industry in the mid 1900s. It's so rewarding to know that this tranquil little village up here in the lakes has been able to hold on to those memories of a bygone age when the buzz of the bobbin mills once filled the air up here in Cumbria. The bobbin may be a thing of the past, the little wooden one, but it's worth remembering it was once a vital commodity that kept the wheels of the British textile industry spinning.